Hi everyone, welcome to Plar Academy. I really hope this video helps you out. If it does, I'd super appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, share it with your friends and leave a positive comment. Your support really keeps me motivated to create more great videos for you. What we'll cover. I've broken down the content in Unit 2, Waves and Electricity, just like you see here. And I've made sure to cover every topic exactly according to the Physics International A-Level Edexcel syllabus, which you can see right here. In this video, we're diving into Topic 3, Waves, specifically focusing on diffraction of waves. Let's get started! Diffraction of Wave Diffraction is the spreading out of a wave as it passes through a narrow gap, aperture, or around an obstacle. The amount of diffraction depends on the wavelength of the wave compared with the size of the gap, aperture, or the size of the obstacle. When straight wave fronts encounter a gap, or aperture, in a barrier, they pass through and diffract, spreading out into the region beyond. The wave fronts curve at the edges of the gap, while the central portion remains relatively straight. This shown that these area are diffracted. This area is not diffracted. As the size gap decreases to approach the wavelength, diffraction becomes more, resulting in greater spreading and curvature of the wave fronts, as shown. As the size gap decreases to very smaller than the wavelength, diffraction increases, resulting in greater spreading and curvature of the wave fronts, but the diffraction pattern may be become less distinct, as shown. So, we can conclude as follows. When the aperture is much larger than the wavelength, diffraction is minimal, little waveforms curvature. When the aperture size is comparable to the wavelength, diffraction increases, greater curvature of wave fronts. When the aperture is much smaller than the wavelength, diffraction is significant, but the diffraction pattern may become less distinct. When a wave encounters an obstacle, diffraction occurs around the edges. When straight wave fronts with a wavelength much smaller than the width of the obstacle, diffraction is minimal, resulting in slight curvature of the wave fronts at the edges, as shown. This creates a shadow region behind the obstacle where the wave is blocked. As wavelength increases, diffraction increases, leading to greater curvature of the wave fronts at the edges, as shown. This results in a less distinct, or no shadow region behind the obstacle, as the wave bends around it. When a sound wave passes through a doorway, the size of the doorway is comparable to the wavelength of the sound, causing the diffraction to occur. When light passes through a doorway, the size of the doorway is typically much larger than the wavelength of light, resulting in no diffraction. Diffraction can be explained using Huygens' construction. Huygens' construction states that every point on a wavefront may be considered to be a point source of secondary wavelets that spread out in the forward direction at the speed of the wave. The new wavefront is the surface that is tangential to all of these secondary wavelets. We can be demonstrated the Huygens' construction as a figure below. If the light is traveling in this direction, this is wavefront. These are the point sources on wavefront. Every point sources on wavefront created the secondary wavelets like this. Every secondary wavelets created the new wavefront like this. Huygens construction can be used to explain the shape of the wavefronts as light travels through a slit. The secondary wavelets that pass through the slit are what produce the curve of the new wavefront emerging from the slit. The figure below can be demonstrated the diffraction pass through the slit. If the light is traveling in this direction, the wavelets from these point sources point don't pass through the slit. This wavefront passed through the slit. Every point sources on wavefront created the secondary wavelets like this. Every secondary wavelets created the new wavefront like this. To investigate the diffraction of the visible light using a single slit. The slit width should be less than approximately 10 power negative 4 meters or 0.1 millimeters. This is because the wavelength of visible light ranges from about 10 power negative 6 to 10 power negative 7 meters. When monochromatic light from a laser source passes through a single slit, it diffracts, as shown. The central fringe of the diffraction pattern 
has the highest intensity and greatest width. Decreasing the slit width increases diffraction, leading to greater spreading of the light and a decrease in intensity. This increased diffraction also results in a wider central fringe. The diffraction pattern of white light through a single slit is shown. The central fringe is white, while the other fringes display a spectrum of colors, with blue light closer to the center and red light further away. This occurs because red light has a longer wavelength than blue light, and longer wavelengths diffract more, spread out more. The diffraction patterns of red, green, and blue light through a single slit are also shown. The red light's central fringe is the widest, while the blue light's central fringe is the narrowest. This is consistent with red light's longer wavelength, which causes greater diffraction than green or blue light. To investigate the diffraction of water waves using a single slit in a ripple tank. The wave fronts of waves are generated using a vibrating bar and move towards a gap in a barrier. Where the ripples strike the barrier, they are reflected back. Where they arrive at the gap, however, they pass through and spread out into the space beyond. It is this spreading out of waves as they travel through a gap or past the edge of a barrier. A ripple tank is a shallow tray of water with a light source shining down through it. The light illuminates the wave fronts, making them visible. A straight dipper can be used to create straight wave fronts in a ripple tank. When the dipper is vibrated up and down, it creates a series of parallel wave fronts passing through a gap. To observe the diffraction of the water wave on a screen, the stroboscope or video camera is used to make the slow motion of the wave fronts of water wave on the screen. The speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second. Which size of architectural features in a large concert hall would best diffract sound waves of frequency 0.44 kHz? The size of architecture features should be comparable to wavelength of the sound waves, resulting in the best diffraction. So, we can calculate the wavelength of the sound first using the equation. Wavelength lambda equals speed v over frequency f. Substituting v equals 330 meters per second, and f equals 0.44 times 10 power 3 hertz. We get the wavelength lambda equals 0.75 meters, or 750 millimeters. So, the size of architecture features, should be 750 millimeters. In an experiment, water waves in a ripple tank are incident on a gap, as shown. Some diffraction of the water waves is observed. Which change to the experiment would provide a better demonstration of diffraction? The best diffraction occurs when the size of gap is comparable to the wavelength. Choice A, increase the amplitude of the waves. This is incorrect because the amplitude does not affect diffraction. Choice B, increase the frequency of the waves. This is incorrect, because increasing the frequency decreases the wavelength, which would reduce diffraction. Choice C, increase the wavelength of the waves. This is correct, because increasing the wavelength makes it closer to the gap size, leading to more diffraction. Choice D, increase the width of the gap. This is incorrect, because increasing the gap width decreases the amount of diffraction. Exam style question. When laser light is directed through a small circular gap, a diffraction pattern can be observed on a screen as shown. A. Explain, using Huygens construction, how diffraction occurs as waves pass through a gap. Every point on a wavefront may be considered to be a point source of secondary wavelets that spread out in the forward direction when they pass through the gap. The new wavefront is the surface that is tangential to all of these secondary wavelets. You will get two marks from waves spread out as it passed through the gap. Each point on the wavefront acts as a source of new wavelets. B. The diffraction pattern consists of a central bright spot surrounded by concentric circles of light of decreasing intensity. A close-up of the pattern is shown below.
sketch a graph showing how the intensity of the light in the diffraction pattern on the screen varies along the line AB. As you can see in the picture, the central fringe of the diffraction pattern has the highest intensity and the greatest width than the other bright fringes on right and left sides. Its intensity and width are more than twice that of the other maxima. So, we draw the graph of the intensity of the fringes between AB, like this. You will get three marks from maximum intensity halfway between A and B, central maximum broader than other maxima, central maximum greater than twice the height from zero intensity of the other maxima. I really hope this video helps you out. If it does, I'd super appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, share it with your friends and leave a positive comment. Your support really keeps me motivated to create more great videos for you.